Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Structure and Function, Level 4, Structures at Varying Scale. The scale we'll move between today will be macro and microscopic. After watching this video, you should be able to identify objects at or structures and functions at varying scale and something like this amazing plant hopper with geared legs or the organelles of a plant cell. I'm going to start by showing you my thinking around microscopic structures in Velcro and then we'll think together on this flexible band-aid. First thing you always want to do when you're investigating structure and function is identify the system. That will be incredibly important in this video because we're going to change the system. We're going to start by looking at things at the macroscopic level, in other words what we can see with the naked eye, and then we're going to move to the microscopic level, things that we would need a microscope for. What are we always looking for each time? We're looking for the structure, how things are made or what they look like, and how that fits the specific function that they have. And so we'll kind of be looking at it on these two levels. The object that represents structure and function is always these two objects. The the two blocks that fit together because structure fits function and function depends on structure but really you're looking at it now at the macroscopic level what you can see with the naked eye and for us to fully understand what's going on in here we would have to look at it microscopically at the paint or at the magnets on the inside so let me clean this up and then we'll get started with velcro okay the first thing that we always want to do is identify what's the system that we're investigating So we're going to be investigating these Velcro fasteners. So there are these two different sides. We can just call it side one and side two. And they stick together and then they come apart. And so they hold on to each other really, really tight like that. So that's going to be the system. What we're going to do is look at it macroscopically and then microscopically. And so let me get this out of the way. This object block is a way for us to kind of delineate between those. We're going to start at the macroscopic level. So what do we see with the naked eye? And then we'll zoom in a little bit more to the microscopic level. So I'm going to start with the macroscopic level and we're just going to identify what are the structures that we would see at the macroscopic level. So if I write these out, the two structures structures that I see right away are side one and side two. Side one to me feels really soft, side two is a little bit more rough, but side one I guess is white, side two is going to be clear. So let me write out what those structures are. So macroscopically, what I see are side one, which is this white fuzzy material, and then side two, which is more of a rough, clear plastic. And so these are the structures. What we really want to start thinking about is what is the relationship between side one and side two? How does side one connect to side two? And then how does that lead to its overall function? So if I write down the function, So what I wrote for the function here is that side one and side two connect and they release. So the two sides will come together and then they release when I pull them apart. But what's going on with this interaction between side one and side two? I don't really know. I can't see anything. In other words, at this scale, I don't get enough information on the structures to make sense of this interaction here. And so what I need to do is I need to go to the microscopic level. And so what I represent that here on these object blocks. What I did is took a couple of photographs at what it looks like at the microscopic level. And so what you end up getting are these hooks. There's these little plastic hooks and then just hundreds of tiny little threads. And so let me write those out as structures here. Okay, so the structures I now see at the level of the microscopic, in other words, changing our scale to the, or the system rather, to what it looks like under a microscope, I see on side one, you actually have these loops of tiny plastic threads. Even under the microscope, they look tiny, so they must be very tiny. And then we have these plastic hooks that kind of move over the top and then connect to the bottom of the surface. And so that tells me a little bit more about this interaction. What I think really is going on is the plastic hook will actually actually snag onto one of those threads and then when you pull it off it will release from the threads. In other words, I couldn't see that interaction at the macroscopic level but now I can see it at the microscopic level. So let me write a microscopic function. So 
So microscopically what I wrote here is that the hooks snag and released individual threads. In other words, by looking at it microscopically, I now know how Velcro works. So when I attach it together, there are probably hundreds of hooks that are connecting with those thread-like uh, plastic loops. And then when I pull it apart, then they're just releasing. And so for me to change my scale from the macroscopic to the microscopic allows me to see what's going on with the structure. And it's important to know that. With anything that we can see with the naked eye, it makes sense, but if something doesn't make sense at the macroscopic, you gotta go to the microscopic. So let me clear this off and then I'll give you a chance to do this using uh, a flexible band-aid. Okay, for the second example, we're going to use a Band-Aid. Uh, there's an interesting part of uh, some of the Band-Aids where they can stretch, and so this side of the Band-Aid is able to stretch. I put one on my finger right now, so if you had a cut near your joint, you can stretch your finger and the Band-Aid will still cover the wound. Um, what's interesting about it is this fabric stretches only in one dimension, but doesn't stretch in the other dimension. So let me define the system. So the system is going to be this fabric band-aid strap. And so what I'd love to have you do is use the thinking slides below and try to show what you see as far as structure and function at the macroscopic level. And then we have some microscopic photographs that we'll include in the thinking slides. So you can pause the video, go show me your thinking as far as structure and function at the microscopic level, unpause the video, come back, and then we can see how our thinking matches up. Okay, this is an interesting one. And so let's first of all look at it macroscopically. So if we look at it macroscopically, the structure that I see, unlike Velcro, I really only see one structure. So let me write that down and the function. So what I wrote here is the, the structure that I can see, the only structure that I can really see is this flexible brown fabric. The function I said here is that it stretches with the bending joint in just one dimension. In other words, as I bend it, it, it stretches along the joint but doesn't stretch in the other dimension. But you can see that when it comes to how do I understand this, I would have to put a big question mark here. In other words, I don't really know how this structure leads to this specific function. And so what do I have to do? I have to start looking at it at the microscopic level. In other words, I have to change my level of scale. And when I do that, I see something interesting. So the first thing I see is that it's not just brown fabric. It's made up of threads that are woven back and forth. And this is what it looks microscopically when it's not stretched. And so in a non-stretched position, it looks just like this. And then when I stretch stretched it, it looks quite a bit different. So you can see how, what's going on there. And so now let me kind of write down what I see as the important microscopic structures. So what I wrote here for the two structures is we have these inflexible brown threads and we have these flexible white threads. And so if I start thinking about the interaction between the two, how are these related? Well, the, the inflexible brown threads allow it to be um, restricted in one dimension, but then it's able to expand in the other dimension. So thinking about the relationship between those two is really important. And then if I were to write down what's the overall function, What I wrote here for a function is that the white threads allow movement through expansion. In other words, you can see them coming apart here in that one dimension. And so hopefully this makes sense to you that we couldn't see at the macroscopic what is clearly understandable at the microscopic. And that's why it's important to change your scale, changing the system from the macroscopic scale to the microscopic scale. So now that you've learned how to do that, I would encourage you to go do the same thing using these geared legs in a plant hopper or even the organelles. Uh, I think I chose mitochondria and chloroplasts in the plant cell. And so that is how you change your scale as you look for structure and function. And I hope that's helpful.